YouTube. So welcome, welcome YouTube. This is Clear Vision Wednesday time. We are a day away from Thanksgiving here in the United States. And that is a, a, you know, a day of overeating and stuffing yourself and probably not the best method of helping your body heal and get healthy and stay healthy, you know. And we're gonna talk, this is part of our series on liver and gallbladder health. And our topic today is colonics. And if you would have asked me 10 years ago, what, what are colonics, I would, no idea. And I'm Claudia Mühlenweg. For those of you that don't know me or watch this replay, I'm a natural vision improvement teacher, the creator of the Natural Clear Vision Method. And if you are interested in eyesight improvement, vision improvement, then subscribe to my channel right now underneath here and click the little bell to get notified because I go live every single week for Clear Vision Wednesday. And let me introduce my guest. So my guest is my personal hydrocolon therapist, Cindy Folsom. Let me bring her up here. Hi, Cindy. Hi, Claudia. So, so I met Cindy, obviously, as I got my colonics done. And Cindy is a certified um, um, colon hydrotherapist, and you're also a new certified nutritionist. And tell us a little bit, the bio is also underneath the show notes, but I always like to hear your story of how did you get into doing colonics? I mean, we'll talk a little <laughs> bit about what that is, because some of the viewers might not know what that is. Okay, so basically what colonics or colon hydrotherapy is, it's a way of cleansing the large intestine, which a lot of people don't know what that is. It's the last five and a half feet of your digestive tract. And um, it's a method in which we can cleanse the entire length of it. And the reason we do it is to help with digestive health and to help people feel better. And it works really beautifully. It's very simple. We just use purified water. So I'll go into that in more detail a bit later on, but I'll share a little bit about how I found myself in this profession. And for most of my life, I had struggled with constipation as a child and as a young adult. And I also struggled with pretty severe acne um, throughout my teenage years and into my twenties. And so I went to many doctors, went on many medications, but nothing really seemed to help. And I remember um, when I was in my early 20s, I had just picked up a book. It's randomly at a health food store and it was on colon health. And they were showing pictures in that book of a colon cleanse that this chiropractor had put a few people on. And one of the people had severe acne. One had really bad eczema on his arm and the other had like a diabetic kind of ulcerated foot. And this chiropractor took pictures after doing the colon cleansing you know, good food, juices, herbs. And he took pictures of the people's skin. And on day one, it was pretty bad. On day four, it looked a lot better. And on day seven, you could see the new tissue rebuilding and growing. And these conditions were really starting to wane. So having gone through the acne journey, I thought to myself, wow, I probably could be a person that could benefit from this. And so I started my journey asking friends and family, have you heard of this? You know, where should I go? And people thought I was crazy. Um, <laughs> nobody had heard of it. They said, you want to do what? That's really weird. Um, so in the book that I had bought, they had a do-it-yourself thing that you could do with a Colima board, it's called. But I was not really up for that. I thought, oh my gosh, I don't want to deal with anything. <laughs> We're hoses and tubes and clean up and all that. So it wasn't until about 10 years after I had read that book, um, I moved to Los Angeles. And one of my best friends here was turning 60. And she just said to me one day, I feel so much energy. I feel like I'm 14 again. And her eyes were beautiful and sparkly. And she did have a lot of energy. And I said, what are you doing? I want that. <laughs> um, and I was a lot younger than her. I wasn't feeling like that. So she was so cute. She was like, don't tell my husband. It's my little beauty secret. And I'm doing colonics. And that's when I said, wow, I need to talk to your lady. I want to do this. I didn't really know too much about it. And so I phoned her practitioner and I said, I want to do this colonic thing and, you know, take everything out, get me cleaned up. And she said, well, you'll need to do three sessions. And I said, well, I'm a healthy person. At the time I was vegetarian. I'm not now. Um, but I said, I think I only need one because I'm a really healthy person. And she said, no, 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 <laughs> do the three. Um, so I did that. And the rest was history. I had a really good experience um, on the first colonic that I did, I was really disappointed. Um, I said, this doesn't work. This doesn't do anything. Yes. Some waste came out, but I don't feel like my friend. I don't feel amazing. I feel kind of blah. And then she gave me some 
dietary guidelines. And after I did the third one, that was a game changer. I felt incredible. I had amazing mental clarity, which I didn't know that I did not have amazing mental clarity prior to that. Um, my eyes were very bright and sparkly. My skin was glowing and my friends were asking me, what are you doing? Like you look really vibrant. And so I was on a mission to figure out, you know, how does this work? Why does this work so amazingly? Nothing I've ever done in my life has had this effect. So I decided to do the training for it. And I didn't know, you know, would I be able to open the business or not? Was this my path? I was working in mental health at the time. But um, as soon as I sat down and realized the far reaching benefits and the amount of people that could be helped and could feel better with this, it really uh, struck me. And I thought there's nothing else I want to do other than open a business. So (laughs) that's a little bit of the long and short of it. But that is so fascinating because a lot of times we go through our own health struggles. And, you know, when I did my very first one, um, I, I have, I've always done them in combination with liver and gallbladder flushes. This is how I've been doing colonics. And I got introduced to the liver and gallbladder flushes during my vision teacher training in England. That was 2009. And the only reason I did the first gallbladder flush was because I wanted to see if I had gallstones. And sure enough, I had gallstones. And I did um, colon hydrotherapy. Back then, I wasn't living in Germany. And I found a naturopathic doctor who did those. And they didn't have the cool equipment that you have, which we will show in a little video because you had to be home today because the internet wasn't as great <laughs> at your practice. So, but I have a little video that we recorded together in my last session. And so she didn't have that cool, what I call a little movie screen where you actually see what's coming <laughs> out. But I felt like I felt so much better already just after the first one. And my diet wasn't nearly as good as it is now. Um, so yeah, tell us a little bit, um, and I will also look for questions. What those of you watching on YouTube, uh, if any questions come up or here on Zoom, please post them in the chat so I can ask Cindy your questions and not just mine. Um, but in terms of, you know, what do you say for again? I've only been doing them in combination with liver flushes, and I've always been fasting. So can you tell us a little bit, like? Um, and we will show a video. Maybe we should show the colon first. Let me know. I have a picture that you sent me of the colon. Is that something you want to start with? Or how? what do you feel is best to explain why people should do these things? <laughs> yes, yeah, so let's, let's show the colon. A lot of people don't really have a familiarity with their colon. So let's show it so people have a better idea of the region okay, that me, we're talking about. Let me open that up. And I know this is a picture that you have in your office. And this is a version that we got um, downloaded because you're obviously not in your office. So let me share my screen um, and have that picture up. And so maybe then you can walk us through it. Hopefully everybody will see my screen. Do you see the image now? Yes. Okay. That looks good. Um, So on your left-hand side, you have the textbook colon. And that, as I said, is the last five and a half feet of your colon. And this... um, chart is sort of based on the work of Norman Walker, who was a PhD nutritionist. And he believed that different regions of the colon correspond with different parts of the body and the health or ill health of those parts. Um, So nobody's colon really looks like that. Um, As you see on the right hand side, those are really what people's colons look like every day. Um, You can see certain prolapse, different positioning in the body. And according to him, these x-ray pictures on the right um, are people who don't really have yet any health issues, but you can kind of see if the colon is sort of twisting or prolapsing or overly stuffed, it's not a good thing. And that's sort of a problem waiting to happen. I didn't even know that. So that I've seen that in your, in your office. So those are actual like sketches of x-rays of actual people's colons. And that's how, yes. oh my yes. God. Okay. Wow. Yes. And then kind of connecting to your work um, on the left, you see the region that says cecum on it. It's the first portion of the colon. Here, um, here, that right? is an, yeah. That's an area that. where Norman Walker believes that that is connected to the eyesight. And he has written a book on colon health. And he's given some, you know, case studies of people that he's worked with, where he says, when you clear that area, it's a common area where people get congested. Um, He said the vision will improve. 
And I do know from my 15 years of doing colonics on people is that a lot of people say that their vision is sharper after a colonic and something that I can visually see is a lot of times the sclera, the whites of people's eyes is much more white and bright um, after they have a colonic. And I actually am not exactly sure why that is. I don't know if probably it's got to do with the hydration and just clearing toxicity from the body. And um, it's quite fascinating. I see that on a regular basis with the eyes whitening up. Interesting. And I've noticed myself that my vision is definitely more clear after a colonic. So and you, I think you've even had that experience yourself. So just so, so the book is called Colon Health Key to Vibrant Life. Is that from 1995? Yeah, I have it here. I can show it if you want. I can me also to put a link it. into the oh, I perfect. Can put a link into the chat. Let me do that. Um, okay, go, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, it's a fabulous book. Um, for anybody who's wanting to learn a little bit more about their colon health. And he also talks about the eyes quite a bit in this book. And he said, you never want to take your eyesight for granted. Um, so that's something that um, I think everybody should be familiar with their colon because it's something that's overlooked. And it's very disturbing because in Canada, I think one of the number one killers of young people is colon cancer. And that's people in their twenties and thirties. So I think we're increasingly seeing that there are problems with the colon and this is just a wonderful way to take care of the colon and prevent it from becoming overburdened. And that, that little area on the left that we're looking at, if you stretch that out, that's about five and a half feet long and it can hold anywhere from five to 40 pounds of waste. And oh yeah, it's quite, it's quite surprising. And it's close um, to the appendix. I mean, my appendix was removed. Mine was inflamed when I was 10 years old. And back then I was also wearing glasses. I'm wondering what the connection is to, you know, the appendix being, um, but we don't know that. We're not, we don't want to speculate here, but I, I right. find that, thing that it's very close there. Yeah. Yeah. The appendix is a little extension off of the ascending colon. So it is, it's, it's, and the colon is nestled into not just the appendix, but in the middle of it, which is not shown on this diagram is the, where it says small intestine, that's where all the small intestines are interwoven. The reproductive organs are right then and there um, as well, right up against the colon. So there's a lot that's sort of in very, very close proximity and leaning on each other in the abdominal area. So having the colon in good condition, eliminating well, not being overburdened with excess waste, it's not moving out. Um, that really helps a lot. So people don't also realize that, um, oh, sorry, oh, sorry. <laughs> I can ramble on for days about this. Um, people don't realize that you can be having a bowel movement every day, but you still can be constipated. You can still not be thoroughly eliminating. And that's where the colon therapy is very, very helpful because yeah, it helps get out so that old material. So the gallbladder, because we talked about, we will talk a little bit more about liver cleansing and gallbladder and gallstones releasing. But yeah, so this is basically, so the area that the that a, a colonic will kind of wash out or clean out. So, you know, the, you talked a little bit about a colon board or something. I've heard about that. I've never seen those, but I have done enemas, um, you know, the little bags that you get or the little cups and you probably can fill it up to the, depends on the size, mine is for one liter or one quart. Um, and I know some people can do like have bigger bags that can fit like two or three liters. So I've done those and often sometimes I was able to fill initially I could only do one liter and then I was able to fill it like two or three times. Um, but like when you look at this picture here with the colon, like how far do you think uh, in enema, like say like one liter or like one and a half, you know, like how far would that go up here? It says rec anus, rectum, sigmoid, like how far would an enema actually reach compared oh, to the colon? Probably around where it says descending colon, right okay, where those yeah. words are. And, uh -huh. and maybe a little bit higher than that, but it's not going to go very far. And if you have obviously one of those larger enema bags, possibly you'll go a little bit further, but mm -hmm. the colonic is the equivalent of doing many, many enemas. So I love the enemas too. I recommend everybody should have an enema bag or bucket at home just as a tool in your toolbox if you ever need it. Um, it's very helpful for sure. But the, um, the colon hydrotherapy is much more comprehensive. The goal of it is to clean that entire five and a half feet. And it usually takes a few sessions. 
So, um, so tell us a little bit about like, what is a good time? Like who should consider colonic? We both live in Los Angeles and obviously, uh, you know, Hollywood stars have been talking about it forever, <laughs> but sometimes you don't know what is a fat, you know, like, you know, they always, what is a biohacking fat or what is a, you know, I'm just, so tell us a little bit, you had acne, you had the skin problems. I was doing it in conjunction with a liver flush and we were talking more about that, but any other reasons or who should consider that doing a colonic or getting a series of those treatments? Yes, it really depends. Everybody has different issues. I mean, I have some people who have chronic conditions that come like Lyme. They find a great relief um, from that. Anybody who is feeling sluggish or low energy, there's something going in the body. Um, a lot of times it's toxic overload. Um, combining it with nutrition really, really helps. That's sort of the other 50% of why people benefit from it. But a healthy person can come and get a colonic. Um, anyone who is dehydrated or doesn't drink a lot of water, uh, anyone who's eating out a lot at restaurants or eating processed foods. Um, if you've overeaten on the holidays, it can be helpful after that. But it's basically just something that will hydrate you. It will lower the toxic load. And everybody, unfortunately, has toxic load of some kind from the environment. It could be your internal home environment, it could be mold, it could be chemicals off-gassing, carpets, we're breathing those in, we're really, whatever we're breathing in, we're really eating. And in Los Angeles, I know when I dust my furniture, it looks black. We've got a lot of soot from all the cars that are on the road and that stuff is in the air and we're breathing it in. So just about any person could benefit. There are some people who shouldn't do it that have maybe more serious diseases or doing cancer treatment. It wouldn't be appropriate to do at that time. Um, but most people can benefit in a great way uh, from this. And I know you were also like a big, you know, we talked about when we have these sessions, we always nerd out and everything. Um, but you, we talked about the seed oils, <laughs> the inflammatory seed oils that are now in pretty much every single processed food, even my favorite almond crackers that I loved. And I looked it up and sure enough, sunflower oil is so basically all these inflammatory seed oils also really create such a burden on the digestive tract, right? Yeah, you're bringing up a really good point here. And I think that is one of the most heinous things that has entered into our food supply. Um, apparently in the ni year 1900, we didn't have any seed oils. They didn't exist. And now about 24% of our foods that we're eating have some sort of seed oils in them. And the reason they're a problem is they're very, very inflammatory um, to the body. And we need more omega-3s, not more sixes. And they're very high in that. So a lot of times people don't really realize what they are. Um, I know when I first heard about them, I avoided canola oil like the plague and also soybean oil, but I didn't realize that the sunflower oil, the safflower oil, those are just as bad and peanut oil is not good either. And I have a lot of foods that were my favorites too, that I found I out that I need to eliminate. And I, I do definitely feel a lot better without them. Um, and so if anybody is feeling really gassy and bloated, you should definitely go through your cupboards, look at your labels and see what you're eating that has these seed oils in it. It can be in bread. It can be in salad dressings. It's in foods that are cooked at restaurants. It's in a lot of stuff. Yeah, it's, I have yet. I mean, I remember I tried that Joe had one hummus that had no oil and another one that had olive oil, but I also learned olive oil has a very short shelf life canola oil and these other oils have like you know like instead of two weeks it's two months and that's why i have yet found not found any kind of food in the store that didn't have one of the bad oils so anyway you guys listening here wait you with your labels but let's get back to to colonics and so i want to talk a little bit about so i've been doing these liver and gallbladder flushes that help you to release gallstones and i've had several other clear written wednesdays about that and isabel yang was on here showing actual gallstones and when we do, um, I have a little video that we shot because you can't be in your clinic today. And obviously we would be talking a little bit about that. It's five minutes long. And I thought it could be cool to show that because you, we would see the equipment a little bit and how it works with the colonics. So I thought that might be helpful for people to see kind of a glimpse. And we didn't shoot it to prepare it to think it would be here on YouTube, but I think it's really helpful to see that. And um I'm I'm on that. I'm getting filled with water as we were talking, and you filled it very slowly. And when you get filled with water, but, but the nice thing is because it's a closed circuit, you know, you feel that pressure and you can see the pressure. So let's 
let me play that video and I will make sure that I have sound on the video. So hopefully that all works, you know, with technology, let's keep our fingers crossed. <laughs> and I'm playing this video now where I am in her office here in Los Angeles. How's the temperature of the water for you? It feels so amazing. It's just body temperature. Yeah, okay, perfect. Really nice. Perfect. So yeah, um, Claudia is taking a fill right now. The warm filtered water is going in. And you can also take some deep breaths. When you take your nice deep breaths, it helps the water go in a little bit easier. And when you feel ready, like you're feeling full, or you don't I don't feel that yet, but I'm, I feel that pressure. That, that's the nice thing about this. When you do an enema at home, you're like, oh my God, I can't hold it anymore. And here, you don't have to worry about it. You just, you see the little gauge there. There's a little gauge where you see the pressure, right? The, yeah, it's a very low pressure that we're right? filling so right with. Now, so we can wait till I feel like the pressure is at that point where I want to release. And then you turn some knobs and then yeah. everything comes out. It's amazing. Yeah, it's a very nice technology where it makes it very easy, very comfortable. No mess or no odor. It's very nice, very contained. And I love that you have kind of a little movie you see your own, you see what's coming out and you realize, oh, wow, I didn't realize I had all this stuck, you know, fecal matter um, attached to my colon walls because you can tell you with your experience, you can tell the kind of things that are coming out, right? You can actually see and after my, I'm doing a liver flush right now, but this is before the flush. So right now there is no gallstones, but then I'm coming back on Monday and then we will see gallstones coming out, which I think is so fascinating because you see them when you go into the toilet, you see them, but you see even more or, you know, additional ones coming out here. So I don't feel any pressure yet. So we have a little bit of extra time. Yeah, I'm giving you a very slow fill. Um, it's interesting too, to see those gallstones for sure. Um, I was gonna tell you something else, which I forgot now. Um, let's see. Oh yeah, regarding being able to, to see what comes out, most people say it's very gratifying to see that and very shocking as well to see what they've been walking around with. And um, most people are pretty full of old stool. It's crazy, I know, and I know how good I feel after this, especially when you fast. I mean, I've never done it not fasted, so that, can, you, can you say a little bit about, do you have to, you don't have to fast, right? You can just come in and do one of those without fasting? Or? Yeah, fasting is not necessary at all. It certainly works very beautifully in tandem with fasting or doing a cleanse, but a lot of people just come in, they're eating somewhat regularly. If you eat healthier, it can be a little easier. The number one thing though, is just be very hydrated for your session. Um, that will make it much easier to get good results with it. And, and talk about the constipation. You said that people, even if you go to the bathroom every day, you can still be constipated. I thought that was interesting. Exactly. People don't realize that um, you can have a clay-like buildup on the walls of your colon and your daily bowel movement is just gliding on by that and you still have a lot of material inside. So um, that is a great reason to come and get rid of that and just see how much lighter you can feel Also, people feel a lot more energy when that stuff is out. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. I can slowly feel My belly filling up with the oh, water. Yes. It just feels so good <laughs> you see that? Yeah, the pressure is building a bit. Do you feel ready to release? Yeah, you can wait just a little bit longer, but also for the video's sake, maybe we should do a release and uh, let's see what comes out. All right, let's do it. I am going to put this on empty. <laughs> Ooh, we got lots of material coming out here in the show. <laughs> Some hard stool, a little bit of stuff there. Yeah, this wasn't, we had someone a lot more came yeah, out. But basically, me. this is how it works. Like you re, you fill yourself up, right? You release. I'm um, sure that though that's nothing interesting, but show the machine maybe zoom out a little bit. So yeah, this, this is the machine and we have a filtration system for nice, clean water. This is so amazing. This uh, is a little viewer too. Yeah, I'm gonna do some a little bit of a massage on your tummy right now. Okay. So we can loosen that up. Do you want to take? Yep. This? I'm gonna take the phone and let's see. I'm gonna switch it around to this view here. Yeah. So this is what Cindy does, and there you can see Cindy because she's just been filming me. <laughs> <laughs> so it's this is a nice part too that you get a little massage and maybe show that liver. You yeah, had let's something. Do a little liver pumping here. So just take a deep breath. <sighs> We're just giving a little compression on the liver here. 
So yeah, we saw some bile coming out earlier. Mm -hmm. We're just trying to loosen up the knots of tension in the abdominal area that always helps the body to let go as well. Okay, that's the video. So the screenshot, I know the sound was a little dropping off at the end, but uh, so you did that liver compression that was also helpful for me doing the doing the cleanse, right? Um, doing the liver flush. But the massage, you said loosening up some knots, right? So I definitely feel like I sometimes literally have those knots in my stomach and not just in my stomach, but also in my colon. When you want to talk a little bit about, more about like what you do with that massage and why that is helpful. Yeah, um, I do use some different techniques with the massage. One of them is a lymphatic technique and the other one is called Chinexan. It's a type of organ therapy massage. And basically you have fascia that wraps around all of the muscles and the internal organs. So a tightness in the abdominal muscle could create a tightness in the intestine. So when we release that, it will release something that's tight in the intestine as well. And then um, since you were doing the liver flush, um, just doing that liver movement, that was helpful to release some material and just bring circulation to the liver as well. And that's, it's a very gentle technique. Sometimes people don't think it does too much because it's so gentle, but it's actually very powerful despite the light level of pressure that's needed for it. And all of our internal organs um, benefit from that in the abdominal area with that massage. And also what we're doing with the lymphatic technique, the sort of padding is um, allowing the lymph to drain into the colon so that the toxins can be released that way. And sometimes I'll even have people stand on that vibration plate. I don't remember if I did that with you. Yes, you did okay. it. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. helps to get the lymphatic thing. system moving because people's lymphatic systems get very sluggish and clogged up. Yes, so. super interesting. I, I don't see any questions right now yet. Uh, let's see, maybe I see some questions here on Zoom. Uh, Okay, would I be able to get a PIX? I guess PIX to get this procedure done. I don't know. No. Oh, uh, maybe RX, like a prescription. Somebody's oh. asking here. I think she means a prescription to get that paid for. I have not seen people able to do that at this point in time. Wouldn't that be wonderful? That would be pretty amazing. I mean, I think actually maybe years and years and years ago, someone had had a health insurance from the UK and that did cover it, but I've never seen it since. Yeah, me neither. And then um, uh, someone here is asking, I mainly get coffee add on for my first run. Thoughts on that? So is that something I know coffee animals can be really helpful. And maybe you can even talk a little bit about a coffee um, because I didn't know what you shared with me uh, doing my my last one. Yeah. So coffee animals are something that people do to detoxify the liver. And I think how it got its popularity was through the Gerson therapy, which is a German doctor, Dr. Gerson, who was using coffee enemas and a lot of juicing with it to help people heal, heal from various different things. Um, and I know people still do coffee enemas today. And basically what that does, when you put the coffee in rectally, it goes straight to the liver, opens up the bile ducts and has the liver purge the bile into the colon. So I have mixed feelings about the coffee enemas. Um, I liked them when I was younger. I don't like them as much now. I feel like it's a bit drying out for the body, but I know people swear by them and all of our bodies are so different. Um, my main thing with the coffee enemas would be when you do them, just make sure that you really hydrate very well. And I think that's why the Gerson therapy, when they use them, they do like quarts and quarts of juice follow that to rehydrate the body. Mm -hmm. But basically it's something that's very easy to do at home with your enema bag or bucket. Um, you just brew an organic coffee, pour it into the bucket, and then you put it in with the enema bag. And with that, you hold it for 15 minutes. You lie on your right side. That's supposed to allow the blood to circulate through the liver a certain amount of times. And um, then you sit on in the toilet and the rest is history. Um, make it can sure be very it's not super hot and make sure it's not. Oh, yes. One hundred percent. Make sure it's like tepid or body lower than body temperature, probably a little bit. So the, so, the person just put in the chat that she means like not the enema, which, by the way, I agree with you. The enema is easy to do. I've done it many times uh, yeah. on the morning after the flush. I've done it usually on the morning. But question if you can add it into the colonic. But I think your colonic is a close. I mean, there's a closed socket, so you can't just add. Yeah, I don't do any add ons because it is a closed system. 
but you could potentially i guess that no you you could potentially you could potentially i don't do that anymore we did it at one time but it's better specifically for the coffee because you want to hold that for the 15 minutes it's a little right. bit easier to do that and be right next to your toilet um right yeah no that makes total sense um there's a question here I, okay i see some questions on youtube now too but we have here in the chat, um, would you share more detail about someone getting ready for cancer surgery? Would this be a good time for a colonic rather than afterwards? And I know you shared with me about the colonoscopy, right? Before like, uh, which I'm gonna do yeah. in general. So maybe, I don't know if you can talk about the colonoscopy, but also the, um, if you if you are supposed to get, I'm assuming colon, some kind of surgery on the colon, would that be a good idea to do beforehand? That is a great question. And that is something that you would definitely need to discuss with your doctor. Um, when I did my internship, I did intern with a board certified MD and he was older and he had told me he was an OBGYN surgeon. And he had told me that back in the day, that is something that he did do. He recommended people to get um, a colonic prior to that type of surgery. So because I'm not a doctor myself, I'm not right. sure um, about different things, but certainly it could be discussed with one's doctor, ask and find out, um, that I know. Okay. And then in terms of doing a colonoscopy, um, that is something that colon hydrotherapy can be used to prep for, for sure. Um, I had a client recently who didn't want to drink the drink because it made her very nauseous. And she you know, spoke with her, whatever the stuff they give you so that you basically, yeah, like, that, that big there. drink thing. So she spoke with her MD and he said, yes, you can prepare. And he had her do um, two colonics back to back, one on a Saturday, one on a Sunday or Monday, Tuesday, something like that. And he had her do fasting where she did bone broth for those two days and also drink some Epsom salt with lemonade. And that pretty much cleared her out. And she actually called me after she did it. And she said, Oh my gosh, my doctor, after she did the um, colonoscopy asked me, did you drink that drink? And my client was nervous because she thought, Oh, why? And so she said, No, I actually didn't. My MD gave me a different protocol. I did colonics and this fasting. And the doctor said, Wow, I could not believe how clean your colon was. And I guess it was exceptionally clean, like more usual, more than they see usually. So it worked really beautifully. Um, so that is definitely an alternative you could, that could be discussed with one's MD as well to see if it's appropriate for you. Um, but she was very happy. And uh, I guess her doctor that did the colonoscopy was too, because they got some great pictures of her colon. <laughs> that is awesome. So I'm, I'm going to do, um, I'm going to do one in January in Germany. So I'm planning on drinking the drink and doing one colon hydrotherapy appointment so um I, I yeah so it's that's awesome to hear so we have some questions on youtube let me see um is there a problem if i have umbilical and or i can never pronounce this word the hernia and the in the groins what is it in green, oh inguinal I, hernia yeah, inguinal. hernia is a contraindication for the colon hydrotherapy so i would say you would probably not be a candidate for oh, okay. that yeah. Um, and how often, okay, if one was asking, how often do you think we should do a coffee enema? I don't know if that was about the coffee enema, or maybe you can talk generally about um, coffee enema or even the colonic. How often do you think that is a good idea to do? If for somebody, let's assume, maybe you can talk about somebody who is not so healthy, who is really constipated right now, has all kinds of, because I had a lot of gas coming out. I remember the first time I was like, gas and gas and like oh my god I know I was a little bloated but I didn't realize it was that many bubbles um so talk a little bit about let's say you have already gastrointestinal problems um versus somebody who's already kind of really doesn't have any belly aches no gas who's pretty healthy like what do you recommend as a kind of a maintenance program or protocol okay yeah and in terms of the colon hydrotherapy if someone is gassy and bloated I always have them do a series of three sessions to start with and they would do that within a week or 10 days. And the reason for that is the goal is to clean the whole entire length of the colon and we need to hydrate you. And most people are chronically dehydrated and that takes a little bit of time. It also takes a bit of a moment for the body to understand how to take a colonic. It's a little bit of a learned skill that you get very quickly. Um, so definitely the three in a week. And then we assess at the end of that three, did you get a full release of the colon? 
How do we know that? Well, we see what comes out. And when we see continuous release of the muddy sludgy material, coupled with the fact that you feel a major difference in your digestion and the gas has gone down and you're digesting better, we know you're good for a while. And a lot of people like to come every three to six weeks. Um, some people feel at three week mark. Well, I feel ready to have the colonic. Some people at six weeks, some pe people, people it's longer. So it really just depends case by case. Um, a lot of people do once a month in my practice. Um, and they say that helps keep them on track. It helps prevent, you know, that buildup and bloating and urgent situation where they are constipated. Um, so that's, it's really case by case. Some people who, you know, have, maybe they had a surgery and they're taking pain medication and they're extremely backed up from that. That would be maybe more colonics. So it just sort of depends. And then with the coffee enema, I don't really do coffee enemas that much myself anymore. So in terms of that, I would just say use the coffee enema judiciously. It is drying, whereas the colon hydrotherapy is the opposite. It's hydrating. So just use it, you know, I would say sparingly. I know some people do them every day, but that's just my opinion. Everybody has a different situation and a different opinion. And I just want to go back to the person who asked about the hernia situation. Um, if you're a person who's not eligible to do a colonic, there is a lot of other things that you can do. Um, I have a product that I have in my office. It's a fermented plum. I actually can show it to you. This is a little plum. It's an, it's an actual fruit that's fermented in herbs for like 36 months, three years. And eating one of those with a wa warm water afterwards will give you a wonderful elimination, full, easy, complete. So if somebody is wanting to do a cleanse, um, but they can't do a colonic, you can do the plums. You could take an herbal um, thing. You could do a saltwater flush. There's many, many ways to cleanse and take care of your colon, even if you can't do colon hydrotherapy or a coffee enema. That's a great idea. Do you have a link yeah. for those plums? Because I got them just as a... Because I like to have something like that at home, and they're made in Switzerland. They're beautiful. Yeah. And do you have a link for those, or is that something that you? I don't. I, you, them your... I have them at my office. I need to get more organized with that. <laughs> <laughs> but um, you can find them online as well, or you can get them from my office. It's called, I think, Share Swiss is the company's website. So it's yes. a wonderful product that people love, and there's nothing really like it that I've tried, and I've tried a lot of the different things out there. Okay. Karen is asking, for years I enjoyed colonics, but heard much pushback about colonics disrupting gut flora. What I love you this. This is one of my favorite questions, actually. Okay. okay. <laughs> and it's a great question because it's very important. The gut flora is incredibly important. And the gut flora is something that we have an everyday relationship with. So my question would be, what are you doing right now to hurt your flora? And what are you doing to help your flora? Are you drinking coffee and putting something very acidic on it? Are you drinking alcohol and putting, killing it with the alcohol? Um, are you eating fruits and vegetables and those undigestible fibers that the bacteria feed on? So we need to know what is your relationship with your flora? Do you have candida overgrowth? Are you eating sugar all the time? So when we do the colonic, we're really helping with reinstating a good balance of flora. Yes, we are taking out some of the bad bacteria and some of the good bacteria, which is where people are concerned. So what we always recommend um, is if you've done a colonic or a series of colonics, always take a probiotic for 30 days afterwards. That will replenish the good bacteria and it will help repopulate a positive bacteria biome in your gut. So great question. <laughs> oh, I love that. I'm trying to think if there's a metaphor uh, about, um, to me, it feels like a clean slate because usually you know, I, I mean, unless you do a test, I think there's tests right now where you can test your mi gut microbiome and see what's wrong yeah. with that. But yeah. um, I personally haven't done them that much. I mean, I've probably done them maybe every three to six months. So I haven't been doing, and I haven't been very regular, to be honest. And I do drink coffee and I like my coffee. And I do the, too. <laughs> the coffee, when you drink it, it opens the bile ducts. And that's why oftentimes we have a bowel movement after drinking coffee. So, but I, I think everything in an excess and alcohol was a question earlier in my clear vision club. We had a coaching call this morning and we actually talked about colonics. And so um, is there anything else you want to say about alcohol or is that, you know, because that yeah. obviously that's the thing that everybody thinks about liver alcohol, like, you know, anything you want to share or any story, any other stories that you have also, we didn't talk about this, but if there's any other like cool stories from clients or, you know, yeah. that have some kind of, 
experience that was worthwhile mentioning then that yeah is I can definitely share some things um so coffee and alcohol I'm a fan of coffee and I'm a fan of having a nice glass of wine and I think the bottom line is everything in moderation and also the other piece of that is how does that feel in your body I mean mm. Claudia maybe you can drink three cups of coffee and feel amazing and maybe I can drink one every weekend and that's what works for me. So right. I think it's the same thing with alcohol. I think it's everything in moderation. I think there's a value to a glass of wine. It has some great nutrients in it. It's relaxing. We all need more relaxation. Um, so yeah, everything in moderation and what's going on with your body in particular, probably there'll be times where it wouldn't be recommended to have it um, if you're really dehydrated or something like that. So I would say if you're doing those things on a regular basis, make sure you um, take care of your flora, eat your fruits and vegetables, especially the fruits are amazing and just see how it responds in your body. That's the biggest thing with any food. I think, see how it works for you because we're so individual. I love it because now after the colonic, I started to do it for, so my, I'm working with Isabel Yang, who was on the clear vision Wednesday a couple of weeks ago. She has me do a foot journal now because during the fast and after the colonics, I had no symptoms whatsoever. Like sometimes I get a little pressure on my lower belly Kind of just like a feeling of like there's pressure on it, not like pain. And so she has me write a food journal and write down everything I eat and the symptoms. And sometimes I eat a meal and nothing. And then two or three hours later, I'm like, oh, it's weird. It's like it feels a little. And doing the fast, that's one reason. But one reason I like to do the flushes for the fast, like a three or four day fast and the colonics is because I feel like I'm starting from like ground zero in terms of like, I have no symptoms. Like I'm not burping, you know, not that I'm crazy burping or bloated, but it's just like, you just feel like really good in your system. And then you slowly test foods and see what works for you. So I have a couple more questions because I think questions are always the best thing. And um, so the person that asked about the surgery actually says she, it was it's breast surgery for cancer. So um, would the colonic be, you know, let's say, we talked about specifically about the colon, but would the colonic be helpful to prepare for any kind of surgery? Is that something that you don't really have any opinion on? People do do it. I mean, I do have a lot of clients that come in and do prepare for something that they're going to do and they do a colonic. I think it depends on what it is. It depends on what your doctor says about it. But a lot of people do prepare for various surgeries with colonics. Um, and a lot of people come afterwards once they've got the green light again from their doctor, um, because they want to detox from the anesthesia or whatever else medications they've been taking. So I definitely over the years, um, have had, have had people come in to prepare. So I would definitely run it by your doctor because he knows all the details. He or she knows all the details of your situation personally. Okay, I just said another. So a friend of mine is expecting twins. Actually, it's the friend of friend. I'm not so, but she. I think she actually went to the the induced labor last night, and that brought oh. up my thought. Like when I was on the delivery table, one of the biggest worries. And I know this is probably not my audience. You know, you're on the delivery table, but is is a colonic safe to do when you're pregnant or when you're like really pregnant, like nine months pregnant, or is that something? And no, or do you not have an opinion about that? Because I have an opinion. We all, all of us colon hydrotherapies have an opinion on that. Different opinions. Um, You can do it at certain stages of pregnancy, but I do not. I feel like with pregnancy, it's such a wild card. What is happening in your Mm -hmm. body? And I don't want to interfere with that. I don't want to loosen up toxins in the body when you're forming right. a baby. So I will not do colonics when per- a person is pregnant. There's other things you can do. Take something orally, take some, you know, plums or flax seeds. Actually, I love flax seeds. I have a little glass with a spoon of flax seeds in them. Soak this overnight, drink it, chew the seeds, put them on your oatmeal. That can help get you going. You can take that when you're pregnant. But there's a lot of other things you can do. But I personally wouldn't do that while you're pregnant. While I was pregnant, the plums. The plums could be somebody wanted to know the the company name. But the plums could be helpful when you are pregnant because I one of my best friends back in the day when I was pregnant, she was so constipated she had to go to the emergency room. She hadn't been able to go to the bathroom for like a week. So in that case, things like the flax seeds you talked about or plums with the water, something that's not like, um, you know, does that make sense? That would probably be a better option. The plum for sure. The flax might not hit that. I get a lot of people that tell me tales that they have been to the emergency room to wait hours and hours to be x-rayed. And the doctor says, you're full of it. You're literally full of poop. And here's the x-ray that shows it. And 
the, some of those doctors have referred me people and they said, get some colonics, get your colon cleared out. So that is a lot of times people even go because they're experiencing a lot of abdominal pain from just gas. Mm. So definitely. And I had a client actually years ago who was very, very, very constipated to the point where his skin just looked really gray. And he had had a surgery, he was on some painkillers, and he could not go to the bathroom. So I had him coming in for colonics and taking some herbs. And he would come day after day, and nothing would come out of him, like nothing. And so he was getting very frustrated. He said, Oh, I don't think this is working. I said, just keep coming, it will, you'll hit your breakthrough eventually. And it wasn't until the seventh session, wow. that he opened up and what came out of him was probably like the equivalent of about 25 bowel movements. And let me tell you, when he left that day, he had color in his face. He looked like a different person and he was so happy and so relieved. So definitely, you know, your skin is very affected, the pallor of your skin by toxins backing up in your body. So that was one so, interesting uh, story. That is it, but that's crazy. It's, so it's, it's really stick with it, stick with it. We always expecting these quick results and it has to work right away. And you know, sometimes when I work with clients, like if it's not immediately working, oh, this isn't working. I'm like, stay. And my teacher used to say, stay with it, stay with it. Just be patient. So that's a really great example of, you know, like even if nothing happens the first time around, maybe you have to do a couple more. Um, yeah, and it's, it's not always that extreme. I mean, it's usually people yeah, get yeah, going in the first <laughs> few sessions. Yeah. Um, I have a, there's a few more questions in the chat, but I'm also wondering. So when you do that liver flush, because I had that question, I wasn't sure what you recommend. So I, this time, the last time I did two colonics, which I'd never done before be, during my flush. So I did one before I did the actual flush and we don't have time to get into the actual flush protocol, but where you drink the olive oil mix, mixer, you take the Epsom salts, you get the gallstones out. And then I did another one afterwards. And this time I had very little gallstones come out. And this is also because I'm doing, this is my 15th time I'm doing the liver cleanse. But when they like, say somebody can only do one for timing purposes or financial reasons, they can only do one colonic and then maybe they do enema. So would you do the colonic after the liver flush or would you do it before? Ooh, that's a great question. It would depend on their hydration. Like if they're super, super hydrated, I would do it after. And if they're a person uh -huh. who's not very hydrated, do it before. Okay. Because I think any type of cleansing you're doing is critical to be really, really hydrated. Yeah. So um, I've seen a lot of people over the years for liver flushes. Usually they do before and after. Uh, recently I've had a couple of people only do it after, and we saw quite a bit of stones and actually very large ones as well. I, we saw I a couple people have about the size of stone come out. Wow. That's bigger than so, the quarter. Yeah, it was, that was surprising. That was the first time in 15 years I'd seen them that big, but they were doing some enzyme cleansing. So okay. it seemed so to help. Wow. I mean, I, my first one, I had really big ones come up, but I didn't, I saw those in the toilet, not in the, in the colon because I did my first ones without that cool screen. So I don't know, yeah. like they might've told me they come up, but I didn't actually see them. And that's really gratifying. Like you see, it's really gratifying to see, you know, it's one thing somebody tells you something, but it's like, Oh, I can actually see it with my own eyes. Um, it's fascinating. So, yeah. Um, so is there anything else about vision that you wanted to share about like differences? And I said, somebody was asking about floaters. Did you have any, or do you, any stories about where people had less floaters? Because that's also a common thing that I hear as, as floaters. I had, I don't have any case studies where I've had anybody with floaters that has had a colonic and they've gone away. I haven't heard that. I saw there's okay. messages coming off on my screen too. Someone just asked if, is the colonic the same as colon hydrotherapy? And yes, it is. So it's and also you, and also you were asking about like the difference between getting a colonic when you're liver cleansing and fasting versus not, it's, it is very different. Have you only done it when you have done your I've fasting? I've only done it with fasting. So yeah, maybe share a little bit about that. Yeah. It's just different. Um, you will see a lot different things coming out. You should come actually and just experience it for yourself. We should really do it. Yeah. Without fasting. Um, so yeah, you'll probably see a lot more hard material coming out. Um, also sometimes you'll see a lot of mucus buildup coming out. So it's just a different animal getting a colonic when you're not fasting. Both are good. Both have different benefits. It's just different. Yeah, we saw, we saw, you were like, oh, that's mu mucus. I'm like, how do you, like, to me, it was just floating. Like you saw in the video, you saw a couple of pieces floating 
right? We yeah. didn't, they didn't, the ones that we filmed where there was more than little pieces coming out, I'm not showing those publicly because I don't want to gross anybody out when it's your own <laughs> stuff that's different. And you find this fascinating. So let me see, um, somebody's asking, that man's story is extreme, but good to know that eventually the colonic will have results. Like, yeah, I agree. Um, so we did talk about the floaters um, and then I don't see any other questions. Um, oh, uh, the other thing with the eyes actually that just came yeah. to my mind is a lot of times when people have very dark circles under their eyes. I know in Chinese medicine, they often say that's liver or kidney or adrenal. Right. Um, a lot of people, those darknesses under the eyes will lighten up considerably after a colonic as well. I've seen that not infrequently over the years. Okay, that's yeah. good to know because I get that question too. What can I do about the dark circles? And I'm usually, I don't know, but that's a good, so the colonics can help with that as well. Okay, great. And your website is in the show notes. It's Vitality Flow. Um, and you, I love that how you have it set up. You can book online. You, you pay the credit card. You pay it ahead of time. You book your appointment. And it's in Santa Monica, California, which is in, in L.A., um, yeah, I, I just, I definitely want to try this now when I'm not fasting for sure. Yeah. And anything else? I don't see, let me see. Is there another question? What about kidney stones? Somebody's asking about kidney stones. That's an interesting question. Um, colonics, I don't think are particularly related to kidney stones. However, in his book, Norman Walker does talk about yeah, the, the, the kidneys. Book. So the book yeah, um, he talks about the kidneys and kidney stones in this book, and he also tells a little story about cleaver's tea and that dissolving kidney and gallstones. So he has a little anecdotal tale in here about that under the kidney section, I think, um, which is quite interesting. So, in fact, I'm actually drinking cleaver's tea right now. It's a nice little tea. <laughs> Good for health. So. Um... And somebody's asked me, is the presence of mucus indicative of trouble in the colon? Um, the presence of mucus is often foods that your body doesn't like or that you don't digest well. Um, if people eat a lot of dairy, some people digest it very well. And some people get very mucusy um, from that. And everybody has mucus in their body. We have a beneficial mucus that you know lubricates our digestive tract. And then we might have a lot of mucus from foods. So um, look at what you're eating. If you have a lot of mucus in your stool and uh, experiment with that, maybe cut back on the dairy if you are very mucusy and that might help clear it up. But you don't really know until you do a colonic because I wouldn't know. I mean, I know I was gassy when I, when I did the yeah. clean, I knew that, but I, you know, I don't know if I have mucus. I mean, I don't know if I had the clay on the walls of the colon, you know, I always think of the plumber. So I always think of the actual pipes, right. Or the yeah. arteries. We've seen these pictures of arteries with the plaque buildup. And it's really the same in the colon. And um, so I don't, you know, you don't really know, but when you do a, a colonic, you can actually see what's happening. And I, I just, the feeling, I felt so light. You feel like you're floating and you're just, it's just amazing. Um, That's okay. one of the biggest reasons people love to do is they just feel so much better almost immediately. And it's in those uh, subsequent sessions, like the second, third, fourth session, where you really see a lot more of that old mucus come out. You often don't see it in the first session too. Okay, that's good to know. And somebody was asking with the dark circles under the eyes, how many colonics do you usually, is that also where you recommend three sessions or is that? Um... If you've never done it, do three sessions and then you can do them as needed, but your body needs to learn how to take the, col the colonic. And um, I would uh, you know, do three versus wasting your money on one if you've never done it before. Yeah, I, I think they're awesome. Let me see if I, I didn't... Um... This is enlightening because I've always been afraid to get a colonic, but I do have dark circles. Okay, cool. I hope we inspired some people to try this out. And uh, at the end of the day, we all have to make decisions what we like to do or not. But I just felt amazing after that one, after even after the first one. And again, I'm going to try it out without a liver flush, without fasting, just to see mm -hmm. how that is different. But that's how I've always done it. And, you know, depending on your budget and your symptoms, I think, but give it a try and see how it goes. And is there a website? I'd be never, I didn't ask you that, but is there a website because you're obviously in Los Angeles. So for anybody in Southern California, I've tried several different places here in Los Angeles and you are by far my favorite. Um, <laughs> it's true. It's true. You're, you're, you, we always have fun, interesting conversations about <laughs> <We do. laughs> all kinds of topics about food. And anyway, it's just, it never ends. It's like, a, and I did a lot of little videos that I want to do um, turn into Instagram reels, but I haven't had the time to get them all edited. 
Um, but is there, is there like a website? What, what can people find if they're somewhere else in the world? And obviously this is not something you can do virtually. Um, is there a website where people can find? Is there like an accreditation or an association? Yes, yes. There's the Internal Association of Colon Therapists. It's i-act.org. And they can go there and punch in their country or their zip code and they can get a referral of someone who's certified through IACT, which is what you would want to do. And I see some questions coming through. I think I didn't, wasn't able to read the whole question. Time? Can you say that again and then answer the question? I want to put it in the chat. Yes. I-act.org. Okay, got um, it. Yeah. Somebody said, can you say something about if you've had colonics a long time ago? I don't know what the question was. Was it, do you have to do three? You would benefit by doing three if you had them a long time ago, but you could certainly do one since you know how to do it. If that was the full question, I couldn't see it went by so fast on the screen there. Yeah, it was like, um, it was basically, if I had a colonics a long time ago, do I need to do three for the dark circles on the, the um, eye? That's a great question. It's, it's a great question. It's not, this is exactly the same thing with every person. Um, also liver cleanses are great for the dark circles too, in conjunction with colonics. Um, hydration, liver cleansing, colonics could be an award-winning combo for that. Okay. And, and then fruit is very hydrating. I love fruit for hydration. Fruit. Good. Yes. Um, somebody is asking, um, is it good or safe to get a colonic when you have IBS, irritable bowel syndrome, or a microscopic colitis? Um, so that's, do you, I know you will probably say you're not a doctor. I always say that too, because we are not yeah. doctors, so we don't prescribe you or, you know, you need to make your own decisions, but what is your take on um, the IBS? On the yeah. So I was diagnosed with IBS 20 years ago. And since figuring out my colon and taking care of it, I have never had a problem with it in 15 years. So um, everybody's IBS is a little bit different and, you know, talk to your doctor about it, but it was one of the things that fixed my situation permanently. So I have, um, I think that if you're eligible to do it and your doctor's on board with it, it can't hurt, but definitely get that stamp of approval from your doctor. If you have any diagnosis of any kind. Yeah, yeah. I, I absolutely second that. Um, any recommendations for a colon therapist in Ontario? I'm assuming Canada. I know you're Oh, from that's Canada. where I'm from. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm from yeah, Hamilton. Um, that's a good question. Um, maybe email me and I will ask some friends back at home who they're going to if okay. you're in Ontario. I, Probably I Toronto have, has some good people. And I think there are, is somebody in Hamilton that's doing it too. Uh, I don't have your email. I mean, I do have your email somewhere, but I put Oh, your, it's my uh, name? Uh, yeah. Cindy Folsom at vitalityflow.com. So Cindy Folsom and then all one word, no dot in between at vitalityflow.com. Okay. Yeah. I will put it into the chat and hope it's the correct one. But okay. also, <laughs> this was so interesting. I mean, every time I come and see you, we, I don't know, we find new things to talk about. So we have not run yet out of topics. Yes. You have so many wonderful things with what you're doing. I find that so interesting and so interconnected too. And I yeah. always enjoy our chats as well. So, you know, liver, just to bring this to a close. So we had other experts talk about the liver and gallbladder flushes and we talked about castor oil packs. We had uh, Dr. Marisol talk about the castor oil packs and how they can support detox. And colonics is just another great way to help you de to detox and also to just reset your system. So any of those, to me, it's like, you know, like a chimney sweeper. I don't know. I mean, they come and clean your chimney, but, you know, it's like, <laughs> that just popped into my head randomly. Um, but, you know, it's just like we, we kind of do these things to clean up the system and you know, do you have one last thing? Because I hear people all the time saying, oh, well, we have lin we have lungs and we have uh, not like lungs, kidneys, liver, and gallbladder, and all these detox organs. We don't really detox. It's a hype. We don't need to do any of this stuff. Anything you want to add to that or say about that? I hear that all the time from some people like, you know, New York Times had an article, detox. Is, and I think they're talking about detox juicing or something versus oh, okay. what we talk about. I think your body is miraculous and resilient. And I think your body heals itself. And we just have to give it some little prompts or little helpers and miracles can happen. And I've seen it over and over and over again over the last 15 years. So I would say never give up on anything. Do what feels right for you. We all have a different orientation with what we're open to, what we believe, how our bodies function. So, um, you know, just see what you're, you gravitate towards, but also have faith that the body is so miraculous. And no matter how toxic we are, we're still here. <laughs> the human race is still here. And 
I think being less toxic is being happier. It's being more calm, being more relaxed, having more energy to do the things you love to do. That's why I do colonics. I have so many interests outside of health and I want to have energy to spend with my family and to do the things that I love. And that's why I cleanse and detox because I want to feel great. I don't want to feel sluggish. So I guess that would be my, my closing note. No, that I think that's so true. And, you know, we talked about how we have so much more toxins now and sometimes our, organi our organs are just compromised. And I love what you said about the little prompts and just helping them heal themselves. And sometimes, you know, we just need a little help. We need a little support. Um, it doesn't mean that we have to go crazy and just, yeah. you know, do everything. And you know, just like we shouldn't eat and, and uh, crazy too much food or too many bad foods yeah. um, or like drink a, a bottle of wine every day or any of these things. But we also want to enjoy life. And that's, I totally agree with you. I want to be vibrant and healthy till the day I die and um, and just enjoy my life with my family and my friends and do the mission on the work that we do. And that we need to be healthy and, you know, feel good and have the energy to do these things. And for me, colonics is just one of these ways where you can just support your system to be functioning optimally. And um, yeah. Thank yes, you and it's so pretty. Much. It's pretty immediate the results that you feel from the colonics, and people are blown away by how much more energy and how much better they feel. Yeah, that's so awesome. I don't see any more questions, so thank you so much, Cindy. And if you are thank local, you for having you know, me on. Hook, hook up with Cindy and let let her know that you found her through me. I would appreciate that. Uh, we're just friends, and uh, it's not like you know there's some kind of affiliate commission. But I really think it's always. I always ask my clients too. How did you find me? And then they tell me so and so. And it's so nice to know that, you know, we, we can share the goods, the good things that we learned and that we found and good practitioners. Anyway, I'm super excited to share, you know, to have, have you had on here. And even though you weren't able to come in your clinic, but I think the little video that I'm glad we shot the little video. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank that was you. Great. So Oh, and, and thank you. Thank you for being so brave and being filmed during a colonic. That oh was a first. My God. That was, I, <laughs> hats off to you, Claudia. <laughs> I'm filmed and I don't, I don't care. But, you know, we have a little extra Q&A, a little extra power out here in the Clear Vision Club on Zoom. So we're going to say goodbye to YouTube for now. Goodbye, YouTube. And we see you next week. And we're going to have a little extra uh, closed uh, private party, so to speak, here on the Clear Vision Club. And if you <laughs> let me know. Send an email to support at My Holistic Vision if you're interested in joining the Clear Vision Club. All right. Bye, everybody. Um, bye.